So hi, hello and welcome, Microbe Hunter here. Well, I think this was a bit of an unusual start uh, of this video, but don't worry, don't worry, I'll explain later. Because this here is Vorticella, a single-celled microorganism, and it is probably one of the fastest known microbes around. Now, how fast is it? Well, well, watch this. Um, I will count down now from five all the way to zero, and at zero, I will snap my finger like this, um, and then you can see actually uh, what happens. So, okay, so let's start. Five, four, three, two, one. Well, and, and it's gone now. Uh, do you now see uh, the connection with the balloon? Well, it's not uh, some kind of a video trick, uh, but uh, let's now have a look at the time lapse. Three, two, one. Well, um, it's uh, much faster than what my camera is able to resolve. And uh, one of the most unique things about Vorticella is its stalk. It's connected to, to a long stalk. This is a long, thin structure that connects the cell body um, to, to a surface where it anchors to. And this stalk is able to rapidly contract if something touches uh, the cell. Now, it's, of course, a way of uh, protecting itself. Now, scientists have been fascinated by this rapid movement and they made videos using high-speed cameras with approximately 9,000 frames per second. Now, in comparison, my camera is only able to do about 30 frames per second. So the camera that they used, the scientists used, is around 300 times faster. And they were able to determine that some Vorticella species are able to contract at the speed of approximately 8.8 .8 centimeters per second. This is uh, about 1,000 800 times the size of its body um, in one second. Now, they calculated that uh, if a car were to travel at a corresponding speed, then the car would travel at approximately 260,000 kilometers per hour. And at that speed, it would uh, take less than two hours uh, to actually go to the moon from Earth. Now, the speed of contraction of Vorticella is uh, therefore incredibly fast. Now, I tried to simulate uh, the contraction of the stalk with a balloon, um, and I taped the balloon to the ceiling, and I gave it a really hard pull, and uh, the balloon did not pop, uh, but it did tear a little bit and lost uh, all of its air. And the thing that really fascinates me here is, is that the cell, the Vorticella cell, is able to survive the high acceleration and the high forces that might actually appear due to the rapid contraction of the stalk. Now, how is it even possible that the rapid rapid contraction does not rip the cell apart. I mean, the stalk is attached also to the surface uh, using a glue that the cell produces. And I think uh, it's also quite surprising that the rapid contraction does not rip the stalk off the surface. And even more surprising, the glue is not only very strong, but it's also somehow able to work um, despite the fact that everything is underwater. Vorticella, after all, is a water organism, and somehow the glue is able to even connect the stalk underwater. Now imagine this, a strong glue that also works underwater. Now I think this could be a really interesting field of research with some very interesting um, applications. Now a few interesting uh, facts um, about uh, Vorticella. You can find them in freshwater environments, like for example, ponds, um, or streams, and the Vorticella belongs to the so-called ciliates. Now, ciliates are protozoans, and they have tiny hair-like structures called cilia that help them move uh, and feed, and the cilia move quite rapidly, and they are able to therefore um, yeah, be a little bit difficult to see because of the rapid movement. But what you are able to see is, is you're able to see the movement of the water, or at least the particles suspended in the water uh, that are moved um, around by the cilia. Vorticella, after all, is a heterotroph. Uh, this means that it's, it, has, it relies on other sources for energy and nutrients. It does not do photosynthesis, um, but it feeds on um, using its cilia and it sweeps in food particles uh, to its mouth. Now, it can also capture and eat uh, smaller organisms like bacteria, for example. The cilia, they create this circular water stream that I already talked about, and this is called a vortex, the circular movement, and hence, uh, of course, also the name of Vorticella. Vorticella also plays an important role in the freshwater ecosystem, both as a predator, after all it eats bacteria and other small particles, but it's also a prey species. It removes bacteria and other particles from the water by eating it up, but it itself is also eaten up, of course, by, for example, fish. 
uh, Vorticella has a unique and a complex life cycle when it uh, it's about to reproduce, then Vorticella is able to reproduce both sexually and also asexually. Um, it is able to divide into two identical daughter cells, which then grow and develop into mature individuals. And uh, these daughter cells are free swimming cells and they're called swarmers. And those swarmers, uh, which you're able to see here, they use their cilia to move uh, through the water and of course they also capture food. And the swarmers that you see here, they, well, they do not move. Uh, you might be able to see the cilia moving, but they themselves are not able to move forward because I compressed them between the cover glass and the microscope slide so that they're a little bit easier to see. Otherwise they're quickly moving away and then it's kind of difficult uh, to trace them. Now, when a swarmer finds a suitable surface to attach to, then it forms a stalk, it grows a stalk, and uh, which anchors it in place. And then we're there again, right at the beginning of the video, where you can see that this stalk is able to contract rapidly um, for the protection of the cell. Now, and did you know that the Vorticella also was first uh, described by none, no one less than Antoine van Leeuwenhoek, one of the first macroscopists. Uh, and he talked about the Vorticella back uh, then in a letter, and or this was already in 1676. Now, he thought that the Vorticella has two horns near its mouth, and uh, he thought that they kind of moved a little bit like the ears of a horse. But it turned out that they're actually cilia beating uh, that create the water flow. Now, I guess that maybe the microscopes were not quite good enough yet to see the little cilia beating. Otto Friedrich Müller, he listed no less than 127 species of Vorticella back in 1786. But some of those, uh, he were kind of misclassified and they're now known to be either other protozoa or even rotifers. And rotifers are micro animals. Uh, they're multicellular and actually they don't even belong to the protozoa anymore. And uh, the definition of um, Vorticella that we now use today was uh, given also by Christian Gottfried Ehrenberg. He was also a very famous biologist back in uh, 1838. So you see that several people contributed um, to the description and to the discovery of the Vorticella. And then since then, uh, 80 more species have been described, and though some of them might be synonyms of earlier species. So you see that there's still some kind of a reclassification going on here. Now, as you can see, there are always many interesting things to discover in a small droplet of water. Don't forget to check out the other videos uh, for more amazing facts about the world of microorganisms. But uh, for, day, for today, it's enough. I hope that you again liked the video. Do leave your comments below. I wish you all the best. Happy microbe hunting as always. And of course, uh, see you around next time. Bye-bye.